I'm going to be building a full basic application using React on the front end and Django, specifically Django Ninja, as our back end. This is what the final product will look like. We'll also include auth foundational for any app. Let's get into it. We'll do the back end first with Django. Start a new Django project, install Django. So we've installed Django and then we'll copy this in and paste it in. Cool. And there is core sim. Sim is just the name that I use as a convention for our app. Change it to whatever you want if you want. But I need to go install pip install Django Ninja. Okay, section 1.2, we want to update our Django settings. So here, we're going to add to our apps and then add these installed apps to the bottom. So sim, which is our new app we're calling. Django Ninja, which is Django Ninja. And then cause headers, which is necessary to, for React to communicate with Django cause, provide some protections. And then we want to add middleware, which is our cause middleware from that same library. And we want to add this line. The, the position is important. It needs to be at least above common middleware. I'm just going to put it at the top because uh, these are middleware runs in order based on your request. And your request comes in here, goes through, and then comes out to the rest of Django. And then we want to add these settings. I said at the end of the file, it doesn't really matter where you add them. Let's add them in here. And this, this will be the URL of our React app. This is the standard one. If your port is something other than 5173, I'll point that out a bit later, then you'll need to change this. You probably won't. And then we're also going to create a custom user model, which is good Django practice. And yep, and we'll create that now. So now we've set up our settings. Now let's go into our sim models. We'll create our custom user model. So this is actually, standard Django practice, you should always do this really, to overwrite the, to take the abstract user, which is the Django user, and then add your own user and email. So we've done that. Now we want to set up URL routing. So go to core URLs, core URLs, and then paste right over the top. So we've got admin and then our top level for our sim app, which we're calling API here, sim.api, import API, will be called API. Then we're going to create our API endpoints. This is all Django Ninja stuff. Really, really cool and really simple. I much prefer the Django REST framework, as you might, as you can kind of see. So we're going to go into Sim and then create a file called API.py and then paste this in. And you can see the lovely thing here is that you just can put your routes, set them just with this decorator. There's no separate URL file. Wonderful. And then Django does lots of other nice things like having a special schemas to do validation for you automatically or neatly, let's say. Yeah, but specifically what we're doing here is so we have our login and then authenticate here. So we're going to send some JSON from our front end, check it with the schema and then authenticate it. If the user is not none, then we return, we do this login, which is a bit of a Django magic function. Uh, because this actually sets the session ID and you can go here, persist a user ID and add a backend to the request. This way the user doesn't need to re authenticate on every request. Essentially, this allows us to use Django's built-in session authentication and its built-in session database in a really neat way, but with a front end. Okay, let's trim down that explanation going forward. So now sim schemas, and we're going to create a schema. This is very similar to form validation, but for JSON data. If you know form validation, if you don't, that is fine. So go into sim and then create new and then go schemas. This is a Django Ninja thing, but the general principle. And we're using Pydantic here, which is built in to Ninja, uh, not built in, uh, added on. And then we have a schema here. So we're, it's essentially like a little checking mechanism. And we're going to be looking for this data for the custom user. And then we have these two schemas so to allow us to validate the data. Again, we'll, we'll come to that. And this is where we're using it. This is a, the payload that Django Ninja will check as a result of us having this sign-in schema. So now let's copy this to create the migrations. Go into your terminal, paste it in, python manage.py make migrations, then migrate, then run the server. Cool, so we've just run, and there is our... Yeah, great, our server's running, and now we go to API. And what lovely docs to move this out of the way. Oh automatically generated using Swagger underneath. This is Django Ninja docs. And you can see you can even specify on protected routes here. API user is protected. Though it is auth, Django auth. That means use the built-in Django auth. So nice, so easy. You can even test that out. So yeah, if I just go here, for example, and then try it out, just get us here as RF token. There's a CSRF token. And this is the command response 
uh, yeah, so we'll be using this stuff, but hopefully you can see how good this is because just having this self-documenting when you've got, let's say, 60 routes, so, so, so nice to use. Anyway, let's continue. And also the schema there for sign-in schema. Yeah, I don't think actually we're using the user schema here. Yeah, I don't know why I included that. Maybe that was from it earlier. Let's delete it for the moment. Continuing, so part two, let's set up the front end. So we're going to go to our terminal. Let's leave, leave that one running. And we're here, and then we're gonna create a new folder. Uh, actually, true bother or, yeah, no, let's just do it like this. So we'll go create front end template React. You can, just like that, this, yeah, we need to, you, we'll, you, like that. We're using Vite. Vite is a nice, really nice general front end manager and runner to use the short technical term. So essentially that means it will, has very nice features built in like hot module reloading. So whenever you make a change, the front end will, up, will update and other things. Uh, generally strongly recommend it to simplify tooling for you. Okay, now we go CD front end. Like it says to move to our front end here. That's what just what we've called the folder here that we've set up Vite to install React to. We're in that now. And then we're going to install npm install, which will install React because we're inside it now. Inside here, it'll all React, and you'll see it will install. And then we'll install these extra packages here. npm install Zustan React Router DOM. Great, and now we continue. So let's set up the routing. Actually, let's just show it to you first. So let's just go npm run, and so you can actually see that React app is working. And there you go, it's our default port of 15173. Cool, and here it is. So we press that, and this is here in our app.jsx file, and the hot module reload means that we can just change anything here, Reactor, and it's automatically updated there. Great. So that's all working. Let's get rid of this, version designer. Okay, now we're going to copy and just replace all of this. So copy it and paste it right over the top. These routes will all come up in red, as will this, because we haven't added it yet. We're gonna be using our view router to essentially emulate, because we're running a single page app, it means essentially you've got one bundle of JavaScript that runs continually on your front end, but we're going, the router allows us to set different routes as if they're on different pages. And now we're gonna create our authentication store. This is, will allow us to communicate and hold state between the components. So copy this, and we need to create a folder at here inside SRC called uh, store. That's the standard convention. Um, is it creating now? Yeah, there it is. And then we create a file in there called auth store with store with a capital S and then called JS js auth store.js paste this in this is going to act as our paneer uh, not, our, not our paneer that's view this is going to be act as our as our storage which all our different pages which are actually components will access persist here means it's a really built nice built-in way to zoo stand which is this really great package we're using zoo stand which is also very elegant in terms of art and persist means that this will automatically save to our local storage so it will automatically store to the browser and then we've got some functions here set csrf token which we'll need for django a login function sending things to django log out sending things to django always setting the csrf token before and also to get fetch user data after we've logged in and that's pretty much it we've got this get csrf token which will get that special, a special TSRF token that Django sends. You could use a different package here to make this simpler, but actually it's just, all this does is get a cookie out, it's fine. Copy this or use a, like I said, that user package if you want nicer code here. Cool, so we've created our authentication store. Now we're gonna create the actual React components. And let's go down to, yeah, create your homepage. At, in, so we'll just create a folder called pages here. Pages. This is not an uh, essential name, but we're going to use it to make things neat. And then we'll create a file called home.jsx. Make sure you get that. Paste that in. And hopefully you can read that. Fairly self-explanatory. And then we're going to do the same thing for a login. So create another file in the same directory called login.jsx. Paste this in. I will talk these over in a bit. And then one more with register.jsx. So go into pages, create file, register with that capital letter.jsx. And these are our React components, which we're calling pages. And then finally, we want to update main.jsx here, which is the very top runner here of, like, this is where our app gets mounted. And we just want to copy this over the top to use the router, view router. That, that's the thing I mentioned that will emulate different page routes. 
And this, that's pretty much it. We can also add Tailwind TSS optionally. Let's continue. To, so part three, now, now this is back to not optional. But first, let's just check that works. So, yeah, so there it, there it goes, it's updated. Log in, register, but that's our homepage, which is good. Let's just try rerunning the, the server. Okay, well, yeah, so let's continue. So we wanna check our Django server, and I'll take you through things a bit more. Django server is here. Cool, unauthorized, that's probably what we should get. So go python manage.py run server, run that, and then you've got your backend running, which we can see here. There you go, it worked. And then go hit and run, I'll we'll just turn that off and do it, and do, make sure you're in the front end here, which we are, and then go npm run dev, your React front end, it's there. And then we go to our React front end, there we are. We're getting there, let's just test it and see if there are any errors that I need to fix. So register. And then we'll create a user, let's call t at tomdecan.com. And then password, we'll just say password. Registration is successful. It's moved us on there because on the register page, it's redirected us because this is the register page. We have, if the response is okay, so we're sending that response to our register in on the back end here at Django. Here, register documented nicely, which is in the similar place in our sim app. So if we go to our API, there is register. We've created, so it sent our data there, it's then created the user, if it's successful, then it returns user success, registered successfully. And then it comes, this comes back here, this data is then parsed as JSON. And then if the response is okay, that means if the HTTP status is good, then we set registration successful, which we saw. And then we just kind of for fun, we've got this timeout and that was that second delay. You could remove this. I probably would do that in production because why make your user wait unnecessarily? And then that navigates, navigate is the function here that we call here, use navigate and navigate that from view router, which then pushes us to the login, which then renders this login component. And then that is currently where we, that is not there. That is currently where we are here. So now let's try t at tomdecan.com and our password, which is password login. There we are. It works. And there we go. And you can see here, so that was our secret code here, basically to use a secret fact, to sh which, we're rent which we're sending from here, to show that the user is logged in and the user could only access that if they were logged in. And now if we log it out again and we're on the home page. And so let's just try to, as, as an example, we try, if you try visiting and want to try this out without, which we can use here, without entering your details there, execute unauthorized. And we would get the same thing if we tried to do that. We've done it in, 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 in a short amount of time. And this will serve as the foundation for any app you build in the future. So any React app, you're set up really to go and just start developing from here. But if you want to learn a bit more about how it's actually working, I'll describe how the auth is working when we log in. So we're setting the CSRF token, which Django Ninja requires. And if you go, we show that, or Django requires. Number one, CSRF token. Number two, our session authentication. That is the kind of Django authentication. When we log in, we then, this login, is a bit of Django magic because it then sets the user's specific session ID. That means the user's identifying code, which is here. Let me go in our browser. Yes, there you go, the session ID. That's what it sets. You might be wondering, okay, how do you get, when we log in, how do we get the user's detail? Well, we've got this unreadable code and what happens is this gets sent, goes with every request. So it goes with our login from our front end to our login view here. We send the request and then this is a bit of Django magic because just by going request.user, that looks the user up from this session ID token. Going to show the database here, let's go lower level. Here's our database, quite low level now. This is pure, you don't need to know about this for a while if you're just getting into this. Oh, I might as well explain how it works. And so this is our database and then this is the built-in Django session table that is built into Django. And so just in this, that, do you see that? VYM. VYM. That corresponds, that's our session key. It's unreadable to a human, but it's decoded by the machine. What happens here is then by going dot user, we get the session ID underneath, we go to that session there, and then Django does a lookup using this data here, the session ID, to get 
the user's ID. It knows where the user is because we set the user here in our settings.py. And so then it goes to that table here, sim.customuser, goes to our table here, sees, okay, this is now our user. And with the username, this is our username table. So it links them together using that particular ID and then returns the user, the username, and lets us get all that user stuff. Subscribe for more weekly web development and also useful AI content. All the best to you.